everyone. I'm Becca, and this is How I Got Hired. How I Got Hired is a series of interviews where product managers share how they landed great product roles from PMs who made a career pivot into tech to those with more formal training. How I Got Hired captures the various ways to open doors into the world of product. We'll be talking about each guest's recipe for success, what motivated them to get into product, how they prepared for the interview, and what they did to set themselves apart. Today, my guest is Alex Gunter. Alex is the staff product manager at Zometry, which is an online marketplace for custom manufactured parts. I hired Alex uh, at Zometry back in 2017, and I'm really looking forward to sharing that story today. So Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Becca, for uh, thinking of me and inviting me on. Of course. Um, well, before we get into the story of how you got hired at Zometry, I uh, wanted to do a little bit of an icebreaker. So are you ready for a little two truths and a lie? I sure am. Okay. Um, I-, I can go first. So mine are all, they're like three things uh, that I may or may not have done during quarantine. Um, okay. So during quarantine, I did the following. I became obsessed with baking bread. Number two, I learned to play the banjo. Number three, I attempted to fix a 40 year old sailboat engine. What do you think? (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with learning to play the banjo. You think that's the lie? That's the lie. Wrong. (laughs) I know. Shock. I'm I'm sure, uh, you know, it seems surprising as a a instrument of choice. (laughs) But I did, in fact, uh, learn to play the banjo. I can I can play one song pretty well. Uh, I did. I watched a a YouTube kind of series called The 30 Days of Banjo. It taught me to play this song. And um, yeah, been been picking it who never since so becca did you start having a banjo and deciding let me find a way to play it or did you have the idea and then you went out and got the banjo so there was um it had always kind of been a little like idea in the back i've just always loved the banjo i think it's like a really interesting instrument and has a cool sound and um but i don't know anything about music like i don't read music like i've never played an instrument um but a banjo came up for sale on um the neighborhood listserv where i used to live and i was just like i have to have it like this is a sign it's a a really nice banjo and um the guy that sold it to me i guess it was like his father's and he had like he played guitar but he had never learned to play it and um i uh lied when I got the banjo and said that I knew how to play because I was kind of concerned that like if he knew that I didn't know how to play he like might not want to sell it to me thinking that I might never learn how to play sure um which added like a pressure um a responsibility yeah I was like I can't just have this banjo sit there like I I owe it to this guy to actually play it so um no it's been a lot of fun and it's a good reminder that you can learn anything, especially these days on YouTube. <laughs> so That is true. All right. Um, so for my yeah. two truths and a lie, I'll start with when I was in high school, I wrote a letter to the Mac Addict magazine protesting Apple moving away from the striped multicolored logo during that Think Different ad campaign. And the letter was published in the you know hard paper uh, magazine. The second one would be that since Guns N' Roses got back together, I have seen them in concert three times. And the third one will be that uh, by the time I graduated high school, I had been to or lived in seven different countries. Oh, that's tough. Because I feel like all of those things seem very plausible for you. <laughs> Since you know me, I thought I'd go with yeah. the most plausible. Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't know. The first one, I, there's so much detail to that. That was 
Um, and I feel like you did move around a lot. Wait, what was the middle one? Seeing Guns N' Roses in concert oh, three Roses. times yeah. since they got back together just, uh, recently. Gosh. I'm going to say maybe that one's a lie? Nope. No! Oh. <laughs> it's actually the third one, and I threw you off because it was only five countries. Oh, okay, okay. So I, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure you lived in a bunch of places, but... Um, Wow. So does Guns N' Roses, have they aged well? You know, they have the same set of songs and there might be, I don't know, 20 years of not being on tour that they were making up for. So I just figured, let me go once with uh, my wife, once with my brother, once with my brother-in-law and my wife. And the set list was pretty much the same for all three. So I think three is good. I got, you know, uh, seeing them live, but it was fun. To go and that's that's amazing yeah i feel like with some of these older bands that do uh, whether it's a reunion tour or whatever I've, I've heard mixed reviews like my parents saw um meatloaf um before he passed i think he's dead now um rest in peace meatloaf but um they said he was just terrible <laughs> <laughs> really not holding it together but then you've got people like paul mccartney who's just still crushing it so um, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> you never know. And after the pandemic, I think there's a pent up demand to see right. live entertainment. So Just whether it's <laughs> Rolling Stone still touring or uh, all the other bands that have to put it off. Lots of, lots of concerts to see if, uh, if you're up for it. Yeah, that's right. Well, awesome. Um, so Let's talk a little bit about your uh, your story of how you got hired at Zometry. So um, I think the best place to start here is just kind of understanding, like, where were you right before? Like, what what was the role that you were in pre-Zometry? What were you doing there? Um, and then maybe talking a little bit about, like, where this this interest in products, like, what kind of sparked that? Sure. So I think it's about six years ago that I had been working in a media company. It was Spot Cable, so cable advertising, but at the local level, in the sales operations role. So interviewing, hiring, and managing some of the support staff for uh, the sales team here in the Maryland area, the Bethesda office headquartered up in New York. And that different than what I studied, economics and public policy, minor in business. But the angle that drew me to that role in that company was being in DC, interest in campaigns and politics. And it happened to be the office that dealt with most of the political spending. So both sides of the aisle, uh, not just presidential, you have elections going on all the time off years, as well as um, issue advertising. And so the proximity to that, of course, often in political Washington Post, you might have blurbs written about ad spend budgets, sending a signal if someone's kind of shifting into a state right. or pulling budget back. It's a hint of where uh, where a campaign is headed. So being able to see that literally as the buys would come in, you know, trying to get on the air for the next day for about a week at a time had me in a two-year cycles of staffing up many temps and using different temp agencies to get um, probably double in size the number of people in the office. And it's a lot of data entry. It's a lot of managing changes that are at the last minute, right? Usually a 1 p.m. or a 2 p.m. cutoff if the advertiser, the campaign, or the issue group wanted to make changes for the next day. Right, there's a cutoff there. So uh, lunches were later in the afternoon during the busy season, trying to get those last changes uh, sent over to Comcast and the other uh, cable operators. So that was seven or eight years working at that company and watching it grow as the yeah. kind of the spot cable business grew. Interesting. And so, how do you go from something like that to Zometry? <laughs> Looking for product management and actually having a chance, I think, for a few years 
to work closely with the developers at it was National Cable Communication, uh, NCC Media. And so there was a kind of homegrown proposal management system and working with the developers to improve it, help get more data more accurately entered uh, when some of these media buys would come in. So I had a chance to work as they were switching over from Waterfall to Agile, learning it together. And because I was so close to the staff that were the end users of these systems, writing up the bug reports, the feature requests, sitting with a salesperson and saying, okay, here's some um, you know, useful information for the, the development team. However, there was an offer that I got and it was in Chicago. And so with my wife working downtown, I had to decline that. And I started looking within the DC area. And because it's a big area, Virginia, DC proper and, um, and Maryland, it occurred to me, why don't I just start in Bethesda, right? You know, what are some of the other employers that are literally the same commute? Uh, yeah. And that's when, for the first time, I think I saw Zometry and some of the postings, um, 2016, 2017, around that time. So this, the position that you were offered in Chicago, was it like a product position within NCC Media or was it, what was that role? That's right. And the reason for the location was that despite having a a small sales staff managing the political business in Bethesda and DC, the office in Chicago is where most of the developers and the tech team uh, resided. So they wanted, I think, to have a product manager presence there. And it wasn't the first PM role at the company. I think there was a few um, already. But that constraint led me to say, I really appreciated getting a chance to do product management in addition to hiring, you know, hundreds of um, data entry, you know, coordinators. And I decided to look within the DC area because it validated, I like it. Yeah. Um, I would like to do it. And did you know when you first started to do that kind of work and, and when you were working with some of the engineers, like, did you know that was product work or like, yeah, or was it just like, yeah, I'm just doing these things. And then the pieces started to come together. At that point, I hadn't taken that general assembly class. It would come, uh, you know, toward the beginning of 2017. So whether it was product owner or product manager, I just saw the need for the interpretation layer, right, between the end users and the developers trying to be heads down for some amount of time. So when they started doing sprints, the end users were employees, right, Uh, a direct message away from saying, and this too. So they, I think, gave me the chance to learn what that product manager role could be. Yeah, and and sit in the room with the product manager and the head of sales who, um, you know, were in charge of creating a new platform um, for this kind of media proposal management that was going on. Yeah. So you mentioned this general assembly um, product class that you did. What prompted you to take that class? So that's a that's a fun story, because I had my heart set on product management, and when the constraint was yes, but Chicago. And so I declined that. Uh, My manager at the time suggested you should take a class, right? That is paid for by NCC media because you just told everyone, this is it. This is my last year not being a product manager. And so one way to let everyone know that you're still invested in uh, NCC media would be to take this class. I think you get reimbursed as long as you stay at the company, you know, some amount of time later. So I looked around and it was an in-person two nights a week, I think two hours each night. So long days. And it was in the spring, but it's always busy when it's political advertising. And and so that advice led me to take the class, not knowing how soon after that I would actually um, be able to move into product management somewhere else. In other words, pay for that class myself. Yeah. Not not get yeah. reimbursed for it, right? <laughs> it was worth it and all of it was great, but it yeah. was a way to show, all right, uh, you know, continuing education paid for by NCC Media. Uh, and it was in product management. 
Yeah, it's super interesting because I think, you know, it like what you described, right, where you had this opportunity to move into a product role within the organization. Um, that's certainly something that, you know, I've seen and, and kind of experienced on my own. Um, but it can be hard to make that transition. Like you start looking for a product job, but you don't actually have a, like official product experience. Like, of course you can take what you were doing and you can frame that and, and talk about how, even though your title may not have been product manager, like it was product work. Um, but it can be hard, right. To kind of make that transition and convince a new organization, um, to take a bit of a, a chance on you. And so, um, I do think the, um, you know, taking a course is a really good way to just like bolster that experience a little bit and have something that you can point to and say like, okay, I know, I know the fundamentals for sure. Um, and that's one kind of, of the other big of benefits for me was that, and there was a lot, right? There like two features, but I was contributing to this bigger product called optics. If you are doing some level of design or product work, at a company, that's not exactly what you put into your portfolio or your resume. Whereas when you take a class, whether it's a pitch deck or a brief or something, that is absolutely a good uh, artifact, right? To include in any, you know, future career applications or, or just yeah. general portfolio. So it made it a lot easier having uh, materials from that class yeah. to just put them on my LinkedIn, right? Yeah, I remember seeing that. So um so you had reached out to me. So you had identified Zometry as a, a company that you were interested in. And um if you want to share the story of kind of your your process from there and and kind of how you found me and and what your thinking was in in that outreach. Sure. So during the class, what I was encouraged by is it became a bit of a support group uh people that were mid-career right switching from one industry you know trying to get into uh, product management so during the class and then after i think it was six to eight weeks uh, kept in touch with some of the other students encouraging uh, each other and one of the either advice that i heard and i know there were different events that i would go to uh, was using that general assembly network, right? It's a, a commonality. You, you send a message to someone and if you've gone to the same university, it's a slightly better chance that they say, oh, it's been a while since I helped someone from my alma mater. Well, with general assembly being uh, more recent and teaching topics that I think you still can't get a product management undergrad degree, maybe masters, maybe some ongoing, but I started looking at who in the area has taken a GA class. And there were many across the world. <laughs> so I'd connect with them and, you know, kind of follow them as they did land PM roles and, and whatnot. But at some point, combining zometry with, you know, product management, um, you came up in LinkedIn. And I think your title at the time was product manager. I think I reached out before or during the class. I'm taking... Uh, a GA class would love to connect. And then once the class had ended, right. And I think at that point I had like uploaded, um, you know, the pitch deck, right. Uh, an idea called Inpedia, which was kind of a wiki for employees and questions and answers. And I think it was that subsequent message that you replied to, you know, do you want to have coffee? Whereas the initial one was, Hey, I'm going to be taking this class, you know, maybe not asking a specific, uh, yep. ask of you, but I connect. that's how we, I think that led to that, you know, meeting at Starbucks. Yeah. And I had taken, um, a, uh, front end web development class through general assembly. And, um, I had done that similar kind of thing. I was at Politico at the time I had just moved on to our tech team. Um, I was so lost and so confused and, um, I was like, you know, I just, I feel like I need a little bit, something to like help me make more sense of like what these engineers are talking about. And, um, 
And I had talked to um, a friend at Politico who had taken the, um, it was also kind of like transitioning into a tech role um, and had taken this class and was like, it's great, great kind of foundation. Like, um, and, you know, my goal all along, like I, I wasn't taking it thinking like, oh, I'm going to become a, a software engineer. But I just, I wanted to know enough to not be so clueless all the time. So um, that was a really great class. Um, and yeah, so that was kind of our, our point of connection. And what's interesting, and, you mentioned being, uh, you know, already in an environment where you were working with yeah. the developers. Going into GA, I was torn between the product management course and the front end design course. I really like design. I did it in high school and, you know, throughout college. But there was a advice my dad gave that led me to choose product management, right? Do you want to be doing the design work or do you want to be kind of leading? And the experience at NCC Media, kind of hiring and helping people become account executives, it's the people management aspect I liked, right? You get a good rapport with someone, you watch them grow, maybe you have a little bit to do with that. and so. Product management was the role where you're not managing the people, but you have to influence them. And so I think I was leaning 60 40 towards the product management. I really like it. Let me just do the yeah. design. And so it was one of those where I may have ended up taking the same class, um, <laughs> right? If I thought about it too much longer. Yeah. Yeah. That's super interesting. And so we got coffee. Um, this fateful Starbucks visit. Um, and I guess at that time we were not hiring. Is that right? Right. When we met, yeah, we didn't have an open role. Um, and you know, I, it wasn't really something that I had done and I, I may have even been transitioning myself from the role of product manager into the director role. I can't remember the timing on that, but it kind of like we didn't have any openings and I feel like maybe initially I didn't even really have the authority to like hire you, but, um, it just kind of, I don't know that I thought your outreach was compelling and I thought, um, it was a cool connection and, um, just kind of thought, well, why not? It doesn't hurt to have a conversation. And, you know, I don't even really remember what we talked about, but I, I've, remember walking away feeling like we had a lot of kind of shared experiences um, coming from like media and a little bit of like the political space um, transitioning in into tech through kind of like a, like an operational type of role. And yeah. And then kind of the, the general assembly connection. And um, I also just remember being very impressed by how much you knew at that point about Zometry. Like, I was like, wow, like he's done his homework. Like he understands this business, which, you know, it, it's, it, especially because like you didn't have a background in, uh, you know, manufacturing, right? Uh, clearly you had put effort into seeking to understand what it was that we did and, and how that worked. And um, I just remember being super impressed by that. That's awesome. Uh, Yeah, I had been watching it for a while. And I think that Starbucks was a block from each office. So it could not be more convenient. I went right back to, I don't know, people, you know, political ads coming in at the last minute, but (laughs) getting your take on on Zometry X, pronounced like a Z, was helpful (laughs) because some of my classmates in GA, one of them was at Uber and others were at like the tech companies where because of the promise of going public at some point or some exit, the compensation wasn't there or the hours were insane and they were looking to get out right uh, of the company. And so I wanted to just check, all right, what is this startup pace? Cause where I am, it's a media company, but the office definitely operates like a startup with a foosball yep. table, the temps <laughs> number the full timers after election season you know, keep in touch, right? Like the contract and six or nine months later. So I had been used to that pace, but I had never worked at a startup. So getting your take on it when there wasn't an opening, when it wasn't like an informational, uh, you know, for an existing job posting 
think took the pressure off a little bit. Yeah. So, let you know, let you know, hey, I've read this and I understand this about the company. What is it like? And you yeah. said actually it's uh, all of the all of the things I had seen and, and that you had a positive impression is what you gave me. Not yeah. stay away. It wasn't like that at all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would have been like, ooh, another Uber or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And then I remember so um it can't have really been that long after that that we did have a role open up. Um and and maybe that was something I had in the, the back of my mind initially, even though there wasn't an immediately available opportunity. Maybe there was a sense that something was on the horizon. Um and so I'm trying to remember um kind of what the interview process was for you. I'll tell you the the one thing that I do remember is that you had used our site and you had ordered a part. I want to say it was like a back scratcher. Yeah, right? well, a 3D yeah. Pro- which is not the right process. You know, you want like a metal <laughs> rod, not a I love how you're long... critical of it now. <laughs> yeah, like, the, the design oh, yeah. for manufacturing. Well, I, is know, like, now. I never you would, <laughs> you had a sheet metal or something instead. Yeah. The fun thing is I noticed after we had the coffee, uh, a news article about another funding round. So excuse to message Becca. Hey, great uh, meeting you and congrats on the funding round B or C. I forget who was the, the lead on that. But I think it was shortly after that that you reached out and fully employed, right? Not from a place of desperation, like, oh, I need a job. It still required a little bit of restraint not to reply right away because of course interest in zometry and having met already so wait a bit yes sure <laughs> uh let's talk you know play cool but that would probably have been the summer of 2017 somewhere in there mm-hmm. yep and i remember an email maybe or two with um kind of the recruiter at at zometry the hr recruiter you know wearing all the hats right back then smaller hr department and I think it was to schedule the in-person where I came into the office and met you and met Scott, CTO. And at the end, a little bit of time with Randy, the co-founder, who I think I would have met one more person, the other product manager, but he was he was out. So I had a phone call with Hunter yep. um, a couple of weeks after that. And I think that was the end of my interviews uh, for, that, for yeah. that opening. Do you remember being nervous about that in-person interview? Of course. And it's probably not related at all, but I got lucky on the timing of, have you ever met someone that gets pink eye? (laughs) Have you ever seen someone (laughs) get both eyes at the same time? So whatever preparation going into it, (laughs) I felt good, right? We had already met and, uh, and some of the questions I prepared. I think like the next day, I would have been scary to sit across the table from, or I would have declined it. Like, hey, can we wait two yeah. weeks? This um, conjunctivitis happens yeah. afterwards. Yeah, just wearing like ski goggles or something. It's like, cool, dark glasses. Yeah. Like, don't worry, <laughs> <laughs> sensitive to light. Oh um, my gosh! But it was actually, I think I took the day off. It would have been during the week, and my commute didn't change right probably park in the same garage and <laughs> yeah walk walk this way instead of that way so i do remember waiting a little while and then when meeting randy there was a funny story that after during i think the first holiday party uh he remembered me as being a republican because i had worked at a republican media agency because he ran for office in Long Island at the Republican. And so what I said was, hey, it's Comcast-owned company where I work. We saw your cable media buys for Long Island and, you know, processed them, made sure they ran correctly. Yeah. And so it's funny because at this holiday party, I think that December, um, my wife, you know, introducing her both to Randy and his co-founder, Lawrence. And Randy tells Lawrence, oh, Uh, Your husband, Alex, like one of the few other Republicans. And my wife is like, what? What? (laughs) You worked on the Obama campaign. And I'm like, Randy, I remember I told you the cable company, both sides of the aisle. And I think that you just heard his campaign and he was running as a Republican. (laughs) It's funny because the Obama is part of my resume, part of my my story. So 
it wasn't hidden at any point, but it was funny. You were masquerading as it. Yeah, I wasn't saying, yeah. That's, I, that's I not managed. a strategy that we recommend. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> um, and so it was just kind of neat, right? Alt Schuler. Yes, mm-hmm. I had seen your name before as a politician, right? Yeah. In between yeah. being, you know, I think his first and second company, then politics. Right. And then third company. So kind of it was a, a funny story. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's really interesting. Um, so, yeah, I think the there's so many reasons that, uh, like, the story of you getting hired zom- at Zometry really, like, stands out to me. I just, I think the, your just like your your strategy, right? And, and playing a little bit of the long game and starting with that kind of informational conversation, leveraging your network. Um, And then, like I said, I think to me, you just showed such incredible initiative and doing your homework, learning about the product, using it. Like truly, I was so blown away that you ordered a part. I was like, I could tell you that I (laughs) wouldn't have figured out how to do this uh, when I was interviewing. Um, Because it's something that like, I don't know, it doesn't, I always, thought it didn't make a ton of sense if you didn't if you weren't someone working in a engineering type role where you were designing parts um you know i was like oh i don't i don't have a cad file so i guess i can't use a site right and and you had figured that out and um it was just it was super cool and um i just remember thinking that like you had so much of the right just like product instincts right even even if you hadn't been in, you know, a super formal product role or, you know, you didn't have a ton of product experience on your resume, I think you did a really great job of translating what really was product experience um, and just like showing a lot of those like kind of innate ways that you thought like a product person. Um, So I think to me, that's, that's what makes your story so cool. And and I think it really is a great lesson for anyone, uh, you know, whether you want to go into a product role, honestly, or, or any other kind of role, I think that's, that's kind of some of the, the best practices of how to navigate the process of, of interviewing and, and identifying a role that you're interested in and, and going for it. So, well, it's so cool to hear that the other side of right. My interview, um, or my, me as a candidate and what things I did, for example, placing an order was the most obvious thing. I was like, what <laughs> website will let me join a sphere with a rectangle and export yeah. it? And like, just, you know, it's 30 bucks or something. It wasn't expensive at all to order that 3D printed part, but I made sure to take a couple of screenshots and get some notes on the interface. The product after all is the ability to you know order a, right. a part. So uh, that was fun and I've done it since, but for anyone else that's looking to get into product, you either don't hear back, and so you're unable to learn right during the interview prep, like what you could do better, or you do, and you get the job, and you don't want to spend even a minute of your first month or, or year saying, so what did I do well? You're just in, <laughs> right. and like, let's start getting to work. It, it wasn't something that I even thought, like, let me spend an hour of you know Becca's time, like really finding out what I did well, because... Well, there right. wasn't an hour, right? It was just <laughs> so bad. Right. There to isn't back. really like a, an opportunity for that kind of feedback loop, really. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. Well, and then, you know, your, I think, story of success does not end there. Obviously, you've had um, a great, you've been at what, Zomtree for six years now. Yeah, um, coming up next month. It's huge. Um, and you've moved up during your time there. So I would love if you could just kind of share a little bit of like how your role has evolved since that initial position. And, and, um, also maybe, uh, so your title now is staff product manager. If you could talk a little bit about like what that means, that would also be helpful to hear. Sure. So in those six years and not just because it's a startup, all companies have growth and turnover and trying things and placing bets that don't work. And so kind of moving resources around. But one thing that I have known about being a product manager is the individual contributor, of course, is different than being a 
manager of product managers. So relishing, give me a team and I'm, you know, whatever pair of designers and developers, UX researchers you need me to work with, uh, I tried to be flexible. But as a result of the company growing and also, you know, acquisitions, you buy a company in Kentucky. And so that's a team of developers and product managers. Things shift around a little bit by being both flexible and enjoying being a product manager. I think the it's not just the amount of software, right, from one ERP to also job board. Because I think when I switched from our internal ERP to the partner-facing portal, it right. was to focus on that. So over time, the experience working with probably teams that were given newer, all right, here's a brand new, you know, the payments, for example, what's now shop finances, was this idea that we had to move away from the way we did invoicing with our manufacturers, partners, or suppliers. And so by having experience with both the internal software, the ERP, having been uh, the PM for this kind of partner-facing portal and job board, naturally, <laughs> you know, paying partners is almost in between. I was able to go from PM, senior PM, and then continuing you know, to look for more responsibility staff PM, like is I think more common on the engineering side, is still an individual contributor role. I think the next one up is maybe principal product manager. And the number of projects at once, I don't think is the determinant, right? Individual contributor, but four big products at once. It's more the ability to run, for example, a cross-functional, cross-department. It'd help if you had context on you know, our finances, but we really need, you know, some new systems being built. So I'm able to continue as a PM, it's individual contributor, more senior, which is great, but doing what I love, right? Spending most of my time in those conversations, stand-ups, discovery, um, and not a lot as I did in my previous life, interviewing one-on-ones and management. So I almost I have empathy for the people managers, both my boss and the engineering and the design managers. And I get to say, okay, when you go heads down, we're going to try to distill and prioritize some trade-offs and design yeah. questions, hop on a call with a, you know, a, a customer or an end user on maybe some bigger visibility projects to the company. Yeah. Well, I love that. And I think, you know, sometimes in organizations, um, people can kind of fall into this trap of like the only way to move up is to manage people. And I think uh, the creation of these kinds of like staff and principal positions that allow you to move up and, and take on more responsibility, be in positions where you can be maybe more strategic, whatever, um, but not necessarily have that tied to managing people because and it, it, I think it takes a level of self-awareness too for a lot of folks to say like you know that's actually it's not really what I want to do right because I've seen people who I can tell like only want to be managers because they see that as a way to move up and I'm like I don't think you actually want to manage people <laughs> like it doesn't I don't I don't think you'd like it and I don't know if you'd be good at it so um <laughs> you know, I've definitely seen those people and, and to give folks like that an option to say, great, you don't have to pretend to be someone you're not to, to move up is huge. And I think that's where like, you know, I think you have a great level of self-awareness and, and you kind of understood this kind of unique intersection that you had within the organization that was really kind of your area of expertise. And, and it sounds like you had some cool, like, ways to really leverage that within the organization. Um, and I think that's another part of it too, is kind of like figuring out within the company, like what's your brand and how do you, you know, promote that brand in a way that's um, going to leave an impression so that when someone is thinking about a really important project um, that like, your name is somebody that comes to mind, right? Is like, oh, you know who would be great at this? Alex, mm -hmm. right? So I, I think that that's a lot of the, as I'm 
hearing you kind of recite it back and, and thinking a little bit about it, I feel like those are some of the things that really stand out to me. Yeah, absolutely. And the flexibility means that at different times there has been turnover when um, people either move to a different department or more often left to start their own company, right? At a startup, uh, if you have that uh, itch, it's good because you now have a network of other people that have tried to start up and you can lean on them. So going from maybe one or two squads to for a short while three, and it does some interesting things when you're with your time when, okay, I'll join the first two minutes. Here's an update for the standup, but giving those teams more autonomy because you have to, right? You, you have conflicting standups. And so only the squad that really has some blockers is the one that you lend your, your time to convey, right? That prioritization now being stretched, you know, it's also very good to just have one, you know, very important thing and, and focus on that quarterly roadmap bet or that ongoing project. But it has given me the chance to work with many, if not almost all of the combination of designers and, uh, and dev leads, right? Tech managers. And it's funny how sometimes you just don't know who you're going to work with again, right? In a six year time span. Oh yeah. A couple of the devs that you had assigned me to, right. That I worked with. And then three years later, and it's like, it's only one day passed. Right. <laughs> right. They've been working on another side of the platform or other side of the company. And so it's fun, right. To kind of have it mixed up like that where sometimes it just happens because of need. And other times there's a, uh, opportunity. Hey, which project's a little bit more interesting to you? I'm kind of trying to place uh, PMs with you know some of these open projects. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one of the big things about working for a startup in general is just like being flexible and, and being kind of agile um, in terms of, yeah, the, the types of things that you work on is huge because the the needs of the business can just change so quickly. And I think um, the times that I've hired or or worked with people that have come from a a bigger, more established corporate environment, I think that's the one thing that really catches people off guard. They're like, oh, I I feel like there isn't a plan or we don't know what we're doing or just things change so much. And it's like, yes, "Yes, start off life, baby. (laughs) That's how it goes. Where's the five-year plan? You're like, we're hoping right. there's a five-month. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> With yeah. some stability, right? Right. Don't ask me anything beyond like two sprints from now. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. It's just an <laughs> infinite abyss. <laughs> yes. Um, well, this is awesome. I, I've enjoyed reflecting on this uh, this story with you. Is there anything else you want to share? Um, just kind of looking back, um, advice maybe to others who are um, either looking to transition into product roles or uh, maybe preparing for a product interview, um, anything that you would share that you think has been um, you know, particularly effective in your experience? Yes. So while I've been at Zometry, I've been able to use this story specifically to say connect right? You know, reach out, especially if there's not an opening, because then you can compare against what's on Glassdoor with someone who works there right now. Yeah. And and if they're not a people manager, if they're not the hiring manager, there's less pressure. There's more of a chance that they say, okay, I remember when I was trying to get yeah. into product, I think very few people started in product. They started doing something and then <laughs> got closer to this thing called uh, product management. So I think that's one way. Now, if you know, and you're, you're applying for openings, as you definitely know, the continuing to be in the meetings and um, build that experience in your current role, you can do it in pretty much any role, right? If you're in customer yeah. support, if you're in tech design, like just express an interest in it. Uh, the language is less about agile and scrum and more about prioritizing right drawing mm-hmm. a line you, you can't do everything so um how you make those trade-offs and who gets considered i think a lot of times i see pms as the person speaking up on behalf of the end user 
because they're not always in the room. And there's needs that sales and operations, the engineering that's going to build the software. They're the one, they have a lot uh, of stake in it. But if you have been the end user or on a call daily because you were in customer support, you have half of it there. Right? If you have an interest and then you, you, know, you want to spend your time motivating teams and reminding them what, what and why, that's the rest of it. So I think in almost any role, you can keep accumulating some of that experience and, you know, be honest on a resume in a conversation. No, I wasn't the product manager, but product owner, or I, you know, helped with, you know, QA testing or helped with the kind of rollout plan, little training sessions for the new software, got to know it well, because I was, you know, uh, there for the follow-up questions, if it's staff that have those questions. Or if you're in customer support and you're, uh, you know, fielding the, the calls, that's user research. Yeah. Right? You're talking exactly. to the user, right? So to make the connections if you have an interest in a company or, or an area, but wherever you are, continue yeah. being close to it, right? Uh, don't, don't give up just because it doesn't happen on the first or, or second try. Yeah. And I, I think it's... Um... A good reminder too, like if you're not sure, right? Like if you're not in a product role right now and you would like to move into one and you're having a hard time kind of translating your experience into product experience, that's a great opportunity to have that like informational interview kind of conversation, right? right? Talk to somebody in product and say, hey, can we talk through my resume? Let me tell you a little bit about what I do right now. Can you help me like translate that into like, how would you frame that as a, as a product person? And how would you relate that to the typical product roles and responsibilities? Um, you know, I think people are always happy to help and have conversations like that. And that could be a game changer, right? That's not, it's not having different experience. It's just knowing how to frame right. your experience in, in a different way. So absolutely. Well, awesome. Um, so as we wrap up, I just have a few kind of rapid fire questions um, that I'll, I'll throw at you. Um, so the first one is, do you think a close friend or family member could accurately describe what you do? Yes. <laughs> you have more confidence than anyone else I've talked to. <laughs> they would say zometry. <laughs> yeah. To describe because they couldn't say like, um, ah, yeah. And then if someone said, so what does Zometry do? Do you think they yeah. would pass that question? <laughs> uh, yeah, 3D printing, right? You're like, yeah, yeah. close. <laughs> yeah. Uber yes. for 3D printing. Yeah, sure. So the intonation is delivered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a Fair bit enough. of like, is it Zometry all the time? And, uh, <laughs> something, 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 something. That's funny. Um, what is one like product or tech? word or phrase kind of lingo buzzword type thing that you wish you never had to hear again requirement mm. and it's not and one that i hear <laughs> every day it's not that but the requirement feels so here's the requirement when the reality Official. is like Down a, from bit, on high. <laughs> a minute later you're like oh we just you know we just we sensed something new there's information and so there's a bit of that like I'm gathering requirements. Eh, yeah, sort of. Yeah. But uh, I've never related to as much as like trying to create some products in a time frame, right? This isn't open ended and yes. how do we identify as quickly as possible if we're on the right track and we're not, you know, going in the wrong direction. Yeah. It's like um somewhat recently I feel like someone asked me whether um I had a, a PRD, a product requirements document. No, or something wonderful. that we had worked yeah. on. And I was like, I was like, we don't do that. Like it just, it sounded like a very foreign term to me. I was sure. like, and I've heard business require, and I get yeah. it. Yeah. It's a brief, it's an idea. Yeah. It's a, you know, I'm like we have some documentation that we were <laughs> like, we created afterwards. <laughs> right, right, right. It looks that great. Helps. It's, it's yeah. more of a historical log of what we ended up doing. Yeah, that's right. Um, how often would you say you actually talk to your customers or, or users today? So it's not daily. 
But recently, a drive down to Fredericksburg, Virginia, visited a manufacturer, 3D printing partner of ours um, earlier today, responding on the community kind of discussion forum. It's always yeah. nice when you have a bug fix. And so like to respond with good news, the downside is that we can't get to that request or that bug fix immediately. And so I right. think having the kind of the marketing layer is helpful and then stepping in to be present on a Zoom call on an in-person is energizing. There's nothing like it, right? The direct yeah. contact. Yeah, we had some really um, fun field trips That's right. um, yeah, yeah. to go see machine shops and uh yeah that was always you know it's it's cool because you're doing that user interview kind of conversation and you're but you're you know seeing how folks work and what the shops look like and what kind of computer setup they have and you know just it, there's nothing like seeing somebody kind of in their own environment you just pick up on so much yeah, 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 yeah. And it's so much easier when you're trying to envision like okay how is someone going to use this you can like see that person in your head right um, yeah, they're people we did a different yeah. one i think was a customer visit and the same thing right going up to baltimore i think and you know they yeah. had a, a job shop but we were there to talk to the mechanical um, engineer that had used Stanley the, Black and Decker, right? That's right. So it's just cool to get out a little bit of FaceTime and then to see the product loaded on the website there in the corner. And you're like, oh, yeah. that's, that's from where they that's attempt awesome. to do right uh, our product. Very cool. Um, what book or person would you say has been most influential in your career? It's a book called Creative Selection. Ken Kosienda, and he's, a, I think, a software programmer that at Apple did Safari browser and then was on the iPhone team, so the, the keyboard. And the way that he describes that group of 20 or 30 software developers putting together you know, essentially iOS is inspiring and motivating because it's just a couple of snippets, but not a single mention of Agile or Scrum. I think the product manager was the guy that reported to Steve Jobs. And so, you know, small team yeah. demos, right? His focus on brainstorming and discussing things in the abstract is difficult and sometimes impossible. But little demos makes things child's play, I think yeah. is what he said. Like, oh, now we know. That, that makes more sense. But yeah. I've tried to bring that culture at least of you know hey put together little demos for things or or use the product and then you will you will find out when things aren't and so if it's inspired by the guy that created the software os for the thing that right. i use every day uh i've reread it a time or two i love that um it, it reminds me a little bit of like the uh there's a book you may have read it as well and user story mapping that oh, yeah. um just kind of talks about the importance of like sketching you know drawing out an idea and how it really takes something from that abstract where people can totally be talking about completely right, different right, things right. talking past each other and then you you get someone to kind of like sketch out what they're thinking and that creates a shared understanding um which i think is something that especially now a lot of us working in a very virtual world can be harder to just be like, can we just get a whiteboard and kind of draw a picture. So we know we're talking about the same kind of thing here, but can be super powerful. So. And one other thing that I remember from that book uh, is a picture of the index card with the first user story. Yeah. I think <laughs> somewhere in there it was like, and at this conference, someone wrote as a, and did yep. the entire structure and, it is a useful structure of all of the yeah. frameworks and things. Just don't forget the why Simple. and the who. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, last question for you. When you were a kid, what was your dream job? Lead guitar in a band. <laughs> so, you know, they, do you know how to play guitar? I do know how to play guitar. Not well, okay. but middle school, <laughs> electric guitar and, you know, slash, right? So which style of, of lead guitar playing? So one day I'll probably buy an, an electric guitar again, but I remember that it was an affinity and attraction for music, but not just anything. I wasn't, I want to be the drummer, lead guitar, no talking, you know, not out in front and, and slash, 
basically. I want it to be slash. You want to be slash. Yeah. Well, yeah. wait, you had a really great slash costume. Halloween yeah. costume, didn't you? That's <laughs> why the, the Guns N' Roses thing, like, jumped out and there. The, and like, the wig, yes. There was yeah. something. Yes, that is... Um, I hope we can share a picture of that <laughs> with this episode because it was that up. phenomenal, phenomenal, but, um, well, amazing. This has been such a fun conversation. So great to, uh, relive our zometry days, uh, in this episode together. So thank you so much, uh, for joining and, um, yeah, for sharing. Thank you so much, Becca.